I'm back. Kind of. It's Emma here. I'm doing an Andrea Moira today. I'm putting in my AirPods, so hopefully the sound is reasonably good. It's been a long time since I've recorded a podcast. Um, a year, pretty much, um, since I've done a proper podcast. Uh, the last year has been interesting. Um, I had a baby <laughs> um, last autumn, and I wasn't I wasn't extremely well before or after and I've kind of only come around now. <laughs> um, I didn't do loads of knitting in that time. I did bits and pieces. I knitted more stuff than I'm going to show you today just because, yeah, I couldn't be bothered basically going to find it <laughs> and I couldn't remember everything about it. So I'm just bringing you a few little projects, mostly baby knits and socks. And I have to talk about my new cardigan that I knitted. So yeah, this is, I decided to keep things a bit low key for my first episode back. Um, not try and do too many, not try and show you too many things and keep it relatively around 30 minutes or so. So got the fire on. Don't have a cup of tea because I don't have a cup of tea. Um, so yeah, 2021, an intense year, I would say. Um, so I took off maternity leave until basically this month. I'm doing a little bit of stuff here and there and um, my husband's actually helping me this year and um, that's really good. It means it frees me up to do creative things and do dyeing and do pack orders and whatever and he's we're just kind of I don't know how you would put it but we're both kind of just managing along we're just kind of <laughs> we're just managing. <laughs> so anyway, Willy Mammoth Fibre Company is still going. <laughs> and I have a little couple of skeins of stuff to show you that'll be in the next shop update. It's going to be a relatively small shop update. Um, but filled with nice yarn. So I am going to start with my finished objects. I should probably do some sort of big introduction, but yeah not going to do that. Uh, yeah, I think most of you who are subscribed know me by now. Um, anyway, if you don't, I'll do one in the next episode, if I ever do another episode. First of all, um, I'm going to show you some baby hats that I knitted. I have three here and um, I'll show you. So this is them here. <laughs> The first one, this is Anchor's Bonnet. I think it's by Petite Knit. Um, this was quite big, so it doesn't fit my wee one yet. It's also slightly impractical. <laughs> I realise with these strings, um, I spend half my time wondering um, if the baby's getting strangled. <laughs> when I try stuff with so yeah not very practical if I was doing this again I'd probably just snip these off and do like a wee tab in below like that um so this is knitted in a yarn that I got at a swap table at the all in knit retreat and um it's blacker yarns brushwork I don't know the color sorry and uh turned out really nice i would say the style of bonnet is not i don't know it doesn't really fit that well i don't know it's quite gateway around here so yeah i don't know about that i don't know if i'd knit another one like this to be honest i mean it looks really cute but it's kind of impractical so there's that um, I also knitted this one, which I didn't have a pattern for. I just totally made it up. I knitted it when I was in hospital and I just quickly grabbed a yarn. I was in hospital a long time. <laughs> um, so I grabbed this um, when I had to be readmitted after I got discharged with the baby. <laughs> um, and I took this with me and decided to just randomly cast something on. I didn't have any mind space at all whatsoever to read a pattern. So I just made something up randomly. It's a kind of a weird shape. 
<laughs> but that's all that I had the mind space for and this is knitted in my BFL Maxim DK dyed with indigo it's just some leftovers I had and I did the wee pom-pom with one of the pom-pom makers I think it's from Clover um so the dog has got this hat so many times and he hasn't been able to write the pom-pom on it well maybe just slightly and it's quite cute because the way it sits it kind of hangs like that it looks like a wee pixie hat so i'm pretty sure i cast on 60 or 64 stitches of the dk on four millimeter needles knitted a few rounds decreased on the top first and then on the bottom later i think that's what i did i can hardly remember and my most recent hat that i finished is this one um i actually held two strands of my bfl mass and dk together to make like an iron weight this is um in the peony colorway uh um, i knitted this up super fast again no pattern i just kind of winged it as they say and um it's not very good i've got to be honest it was sort of really fudged i mean the crown decreases look pretty all right now i think not amazing i mean it could look a lot nicer um i did like a half twister rib but then i was kind of stupid because then when i put the brim up then i realized it wasn't it didn't look the same as this this and this don't look the same so that was an error but <laughs> whatever, um, that'll only fit for a short while, so I'm not going to stress about that. Um, I would like to knit a nicer one in this style for next winter in maybe this colour. Um, I think that'd be nice, actually. Um, I cast on 50, maybe like 50. 56 stitches or something I can't remember but I had to fudge it I had to cast on extra ones after my first row but I can't actually see where I did that now so it's obviously fine and um and then yeah so I did the half twisted rib again this is just leftovers that I had and I wanted it to go quick so that's why I held two strands together see it looks quite nice like this but then when you fold it up it doesn't doesn't look right um didn't add a pom-pom to this one because um ask it yeah i wanted i have this wee kind of pram suit thing that i wanted the hood to go up on and if i had a pom-pom on it that wouldn't really work so i did that so i'm definitely going to do another one of these i think i used 4.5 millimeter needles but honestly like i should have used like about a 5.5 maybe um, just to get because it's quite like firm I mean it's it fits on it fits on baby's head well but I think I think it would be better if it was a little bit like of a looser gauge like this this hat so next time yeah I'll use a bigger size of a needle and I'll cast on a few more stitches because this is actually quite tight on her head. There, you've got a little bit of information now. <laughs> it's getting really difficult not to say her. Um, keep referring to the baby as baby. So there you go. I'll just tell you now, I had a girl. So, okay, so three hats in it, the three hats. I also knitted this little cardigan that I'm just doing up the buttons on. This is another pattern by Petite Knit. I like her children's patterns. I think they're really cute. I can't remember which, what the name of this pattern is. Um, I think, nah, so, nah, I don't know, sorry. Um, that's not helpful at all, but I did, I know the yarn, I knitted in used wool, um, I think it's called Seath, Seath, means peace, I think. And again, leftovers from my weekender cardigan, isn't it so cute? 
and the wee pockets like fuck, I'm sure she can't put anything in these pockets um but it's really cute um the arms are obviously too long and it doesn't sit like super well on her like if it was a bit longer i think that would have been good the way this button band was done and the same with this button band it's knitted as part of the cardigan like top down and the buttonholes in this one you have to make them afterwards which i feel didn't work very well you see looks kind of rough and also makes it go like out like that which i don't love but overall, like a nice project. I've actually knitted a lot of these for, uh, well, I've knitted, I think one for my nephew or two, maybe two for him. Possibly one for my niece, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so we've worn this a little bit, not loads. The buttons, should talk about the buttons. These are horn buttons from the textile garden. Um, it's the same size and type of button as this, but this is a different color. This is the olive green color. Um, in the pattern, it says to do like, I guess five or maybe six buttons, but I was just like, that's way too many. So I just did four, which works well. And yeah, I would knit another one of these again, but I meant it to do um, proper buttonholes and I would also make it longer and I would possibly use yarn that's a little bit drapier than this I mean this is the type of yarn I like for my garments I like something a wee bit more textured and something a wee bit more toothy but sometimes I find it, it kind of scrunched up a wee bit whenever she was you know like I don't know, it's scrunched up a little bit more easier than something maybe with a bit more drape, but maybe I'm just imagining that. I don't know. So, <laughs> um, oh, it's so cute. That's this. And the texture of this yarn is beautiful. I absolutely love it. And I, I like, I wear my weekender quite a bit. Um, especially um, postpartum, there wasn't loads of stuff that I felt really comfortable in and the weekender was one of the things that I felt really comfortable in so I enjoyed wearing that and um, I had been wearing it for a while and then I started wearing it loads now I'm kind of wearing this cardigan loads instead of wearing the weekender so um pleased with how this turned out now um I suppose we should talk about this finished object and um, this is the Ultimate Lazy Cardigan by Albina McLaughlin. I started this at the very start of January and I finished it probably not even a week ago. This is actually, the yarn for this is a new yarn that's coming to Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company later this year. Um, the colorway, it's a DK weight, sorry, I forgot to say. And um, the colorway, this colorway is cognac. So this is me kind of um, testing out the yarn for different things. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to release it later, like maybe even in the start of the summer. So people can knit sweaters and stuff for the autumn. Um, so let's talk about this, the ultimate lazy cardigan a little bit. So it's knitted top down. It's got a really interesting construction. I wanted something that was really easy that I could basically knit really fast because I didn't have any cardigans. I this is my only cardigan. I have a penguino, but it's super impractical. You can't wear it below coats and I'm just really at the stage of life, you know, where I just need practical clothes and ones that I really like. I do like my penguino, but I only basically wear it around the house, which is kind of a waste to me because anytime you go out, you need a coat on. And if it's too warm not to wear a coat, then you don't need to wear a massive cardigan. So yeah, that doesn't really... So basically I only wear that like around the house if I'm having like a housey day and I'm not doing anything because the sleeves are so big on it, they just flap around and you can't like, it's a bit annoying actually. Anyway, it's cool, but it's not 
practical. So I need a practical cardigan, so I went for this. Um, I'm actually generally not a fan of top down things, but actually some of the things that I wear the most are knitted top down. So that's kind of interesting. So look at the shoulder detail on this. That is, it's like a little, it's kind of very tailored looking, I would say. Um, like look at the way the arms are set in. Um, there was a bit of confusion about what size I should knit because I was between sizes and also <laughs> my bust has enlarged from breastfeeding. Um, so I didn't, I wanted it to fit with some negative ease. Um, but I didn't want it to be massive either. So um, Albina has a really cool thing. Well, in this pattern, I don't know if it's in the mall where you can, if you're between sizes, she gives instructions on how to make it the right size, which I was like, this is amazing. So um, overall really liked it. I had to concentrate until I finished the sleeves and then it was all just really super easy. I got down that really fast. Um, the sleeves, I knitted them shorter and a bit smaller than the pattern. Um, I thought I'd seen a wee end sticking out there somewhere. Oh yeah, there. <laughs> That's what happens when you weave in your ends and then block your pattern rather than the other way around. Um, so I knitted, I was supposed to decrease to 54 stitches and I decreased to I think it was 54. I decreased to like 46 or something. Yeah, I think I decreased to 46 because I didn't want the arms like flapping around. I also um, like to knit my, um, my arms shorter than it says. I always knit my arms and everything to basically like watch length because like when you're knitting and stuff, like I find it so annoying like the knitting needles, if you're knitting in DPS, they just like get stuck. Or like if you're doing something in the kitchen, like they just hang and stuff. And I just find it so annoying. So I always knit them short, shorter than the pattern says. Um, at this, when I was knitting this, I think you were supposed to do like a special elastic cast on and cast off, but I just didn't have the time to like go and learn a new one. Better put something in this fire, it's gonna go out. So, um, I just basically went up a needle size and um, and uh, just did my a normal cast on and cast off. It worked really nice in the sleeves, like it has a good amount of stretch, not too much. It worked really well here where it didn't work and we'll talk about the button band and the buttons in a minute but at the bottom I mean it kind of worked I mean it's definitely elastic enough but is it too elastic that is my question um okay let's talk about the buttons I'm just gonna undo this to show you so the pattern says you're supposed to put a button in every 4.5 centimeters um, which I did and um, I honestly think it's too many buttons like I would have been happy if this cardigan had six buttons and it would have been a lot easier you know when you have a baby you're trying to do it up but literally like that probably took me like a minute there like that's a minute that's like 30 seconds too much so for some reason when I was knitting down to about here the button band looked really neat, but then for some reason, I don't know why, when I knitted on down here, it kind of got really loose. I'm not sure why, but that's kind of strange. So I have this bit here that looks a little bit odd. I don't really know why that happened, but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it looks like a lot of buttons and it is a lot of buttons and I understand why she probably put the buttons on it so, you know, that it's not like pulling. But for me, I'm too lazy to, 
<laughs> I'm like the ultimate lazy, lazy knitter. So <laughs> if I was knitting the ultimate lazy cardigan again, I would basically do less buttons. Um, and I would do them bigger. So I would do like a double yarn over instead of a just one yarn over just to make space maybe for a bit bigger button. I don't know, that's just my thoughts. I'm not a designer, so I'm not really good with this type of thing, but I'm thinking that's maybe what I'd do. Um, there's actually 12 buttons. I think, I think, you know, if I had one here, one here, one here, that like six buttons would have been enough. So um, that was that. The buttons again are from the textile garden. They're the horn buttons. They're 15 millimeters and they are in the brown. I think it's just called brown or dark brown or something colorway. Oops, see, look, I missed a button. <laughs> um. Get this fire going yet. Um, but overall, I mean, I knitted it so fast and I made quite a lot of mistakes and I was just like, I'm not gonna rip this out. I don't have time anymore. Like, I just need to get this knitted so that I can wear this. Um, it was either that or buy something and I didn't really want to do that. I was just like, I did just want to make it. So I'm really glad that I did. And you know what? It turned out good enough. Like sometimes you just have to be happy with good enough. Normally, I'm not like that. Normally I'm like, rip it out and redo it. But I just think that when you have a baby, it's just not really that, like you feel like your time is so precious and you don't want to waste time by like, you know, ripping out a small hole that you could just darn after or you know all that stuff so just kind of fudged quite a lot of stuff here <laughs> there were some weird holes here that I just sewed up after and it, it looks completely fine I think the most glaring mistake is with this button band I don't know it just sits a bit funny like like here it's like the buttons aren't equally spaced below but i tried my best it's actually really hard to put buttons on as well um i'll say that it's quite challenging so but overall pretty pleased with that okay so that's enough chatting about this i'm going to show you my works in progress or some of them uh first thing i'm knitting on at the moment is a sock um kept in my little Jenna Rose bag. Um, this is my hearth sock base that I launched in November. And this is the mustard green colorway. It's a slightly thicker sock yarn. It's 330 meters per 100 grams. And it's 50% BFL, 50% Jacob high twist. It's a three ply construction and um no pattern again i'm just doing um heel flap and gusset and just like a normal toe decrease i actually knitted these using 2.25 needles on the top and then switched to two millimeter for the rest of the sock for good wear i think i'm getting a gauge of about 30 29 or 30 stitches um per 10 centimeters with this yarn on the two mil two millimeter needles so that's really good for no nylon socks it's non super wash as well so you do have to hand wash these but um another thing i would say is if you're knitting um with non super wash and no nylon socks is knit them a bit longer especially if, if you have sweaty feet i always knit mine about this much too long um, because they do fill and so in the next you know a few weeks when I wear these after I have them knitted they'll they'll shrink a bit they kind of tend to shrink around the heel so then they fit perfectly if you just knit them a tiny bit longer so yeah I'll get my pair of socks out of this and probably have a good bit left over I'm actually using the I think they're called Addy Trios I sometimes use these, they're not my favourite, but these are the ones that I happen to have spare when I want to knit these. So um, yeah, they're they're quite good. I think uh, the wee joins a bit annoying sometimes, but overall it's not bad. The fire's not gonna go, is it? Um, so next work in progress. <laughs> 
actually i'll just show you some skeins of the hard sock what it looks like because i have some coming in the next shop update which is on the 23rd of february 8 p.m gmt this is the hard sock this one's dyed with indigo and it's just called indigo and this one's called peony exhaust too um the base is actually like a kind of brownie heathered color so when you over dye on that like it makes the most amazing colors these are naturally dyed of course and um the label i think i did i do a fun story about the label before i took i take well i take my own photos but i took this one for the label and i took it down my uh granny's lane down at the farm and i wanted to have something that felt kind of cozy like hedgerowy and just sort of like hibernation -y. i don't i don't know i don't i'm not describing this very well um but basically i wanted something like the sock yarn like was really cozy and i just wanted the labels and the name to reflect that so that's why i called it hearth sock so yeah, going to have these in the next shop update. Next work in progress is another sock on card sock. I do knit with other people's yarn, I promise you. I just, not in this episode apparently. This is the hard sock in the copper colorway. This is the colorway Melody Hoffman, I believe used in her Eva sweater, but on it was on the BFL Mass MDK base which was designed in my yarn. And this is a little hot cross bun from Chapel View Crafts. So cute, so cozy. And this pattern is the, it's by Kay Johnson and it's called Dunbroch, I think. It's quite a complicated pattern, so I have not left at this since September. Um. I'm getting to the point now where potentially I could do slightly more complicated things again, but I did have to, I'm not the best knitter in the world, so like I have to concentrate when I do anything with pattern. And um, really like this thing, it's going to be super cozy. It was actually lovely doing like a pattern. I never do patterns on socks, so I enjoyed this. This is kept in a little bag by Minook that I got at Edinburgh Yarn Festival one year. So that was that. And my last whip that I'm going to show you today, because we're now at 27 minutes, um, is a scrappy sock. Woo! I'm all about the autumn colours these days. Uh, so yeah, I had sometimes i test yarn and i have like little scraps and stuff left and i was just i always want to do a scrappy sock and doing it in three by one rib no pattern again heel flap and gusset just the usual and doesn't that look super cute i just love it i really love it and i'm on my second one now so colorful and cute so I'm just doing random stripes, whatever I feel like, but I'm going to do the heel and the toe, this greeny colour on both of them. This has a little macaroon by Chapel View Crafts. I love her progress keepers. So cute. I got her advent calendar actually. This base is my natural sock base. and um, Probably loads of you know about it. And... Um, it was my original no nylon non super wash sock base with high twist um, and it's 50% BFL, 50% TV it. And I should probably say all of my bases are spun in the UK and all of my yarn is sourced from the UK um, or Northern Ireland. Um, and some of it's spun on wheels, the limited edition stuff spun on wheels, but yeah, it's all UK based. So I like this. I'm here for this. <laughs> and this is housed in a little bag. Like here's all my little scraps. Oh, you can't really see. Um, in a little bag that my friend Kate made for the All In Knit Retreat in some nice Irish linen. 
So yeah, that was a super duper, really fast catch up with me about life, about knitting. And um, yeah, thanks for sticking around if you're still here after a year. <laughs> and I would love to keep podcasting, but I think I'm going to have to make a more realistic schedule for myself. Like Maybe if I did one once a quarter, then I'd actually have more stuff to show and I could keep on top of showing you what I'm working on. Um, so I don't know, that probably sounds like very little, but it would probably feel manageable for me. So I might do that. Sure, it's better than nothing. Sure, I haven't posted in a year. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. What do you think? Anyway, nice to see you again. Hope you enjoyed that and hopefully I'll see you another time. Bye.